Here I've got two Dells XPS 13s. One of them has the top of the line Snapdragon X Elite chip inside. First generation. Are they going to have a new generation coming soon? We'll see. And this one is an XPS 13 with Intel's latest attempt trying to topple the Battery King because this has the latest Core Ultra 7, the Lunar Lake version. Today, I want to do some developer related tests on these, but I'm not going to go into the physical review details. I did that in the previous video. I'll link to that down below because these bodies are exactly the same. The only thing that's different here is that Lunar Lake chip and the XLE machine I've been using for over a year. I do have a full review where I took that on a trip. I can link to that video down below too. Let's see. Uh, the only thing I will do now is that one finger open trick because I grew my nails out. Let's see if it works. Oh, got that one. Ah. All right. That didn't work. Here's the system information on these. This one has the X1. One is the first generation 8100, which is one of the highest Orion chips. Qualcomm Orion is the core. This one has the Ultra 7 256V. Now we need a little bit more detail than that. So let's go into task manager. And I wanna show you the CPU specifically. Check this out. The X Elite has 12 cores three times this and the base speed is 3.42 gigahertz the lunar lake machine only has eight cores at a base speed of 2.2 gigahertz so already on paper the lunar lake machine is at a big disadvantage but it was designed to be a longevity master is that is that the right way to say it? Longevity King. Up till now, X Elite and X Plus have been the longevity kings. I made a whole video comparing a bunch of different laptops and real world software developer tasks, specifically around an automated battery test. And I'm gonna do that today too. But first, just to humor myself and you, let's do a couple of performance related tests. I'm gonna kick things off with Speedometer 3. Boom. So it's testing a bunch of frameworks, plain JavaScript applications, TypeScript applications, adding tons of items to lists, removing tons of items from lists, graphs, charts. This would be the experience of a software developer who is working a lot on JavaScript apps. Therefore, it's going to expose how single core operations work on this machine. Okay, the X Elite machine is done and this is a single core test. So this shouldn't favor the X Elite machine since it has more cores. Maybe it should be a little bit because the, each core is a little bit faster, but oh my gosh wow <laughs> this can't be right this cannot be right 13 this has got to be like one of the worst scores i've ever seen i have to do this test again this is crazy <laughs> can i even tell that this is going a little bit slower i don't know probably not too much flashing 34.5 for the x elite machine very consistent this one is still going i have a bad feeling about this 18.5 it's better but it's uh it's the second worst score i've ever seen probably that is terrible i'm sorry that is just wrong and i'm i'm not like i was not expecting this i thought that would be at least a little bit closer in single core multi-core doesn't stand a chance Oh my goodness. And by the way, the X Elite machines went down in price quite a lot. I think there's been a lot of backlash from the gaming community because of the processors that are on there and they're not supporting maybe all the games out there. I mean, gaming on these machines is not the best. It's not like you're playing with one of these things, right? So it's not going to be ideal no matter what. But backwards compatibility with x86 apps is probably what scared a lot of people from the new ARM based architecture because this is running Windows for ARM and this is running good old Windows x86. But that's exactly why these machines are more efficient. Take a look at this, for example. I left these both charged to the full yesterday. I unplugged them. They sat on the floor until today when I'm making this video and then I plugged them in and and here is the battery percentage of the X Elite machine. I didn't do anything on these machines besides what you've just seen. We're at 96%. The Lunar Lake machine, we're at 86%. Already is showing that the X Elite based machine is more efficient without even me doing much. And check out how people's reaction over the past year has changed the price of these machines. This machine is down to $749 and the Lunar Lake machine is $1,109. That <laughs> is a huge difference. Holy cow. Now, I'm not comparing the Dell machine here. I'm not comparing the body because if it were up to me and I'm honest with y'all, 
I would not buy either one of these just because I really hate the fact that there's no function keys. I hate the fact that the keys are all clobbered up together and that there is no visible trackpad. You kind of have to guess where the trackpad is. It's annoying. I did the full review and all that. You can check that out if you want. The one nice design perk of this design, uh, that was weird. It has USB-C ports on both sides of the body. So if you need to plug anything from the right, you can. If you need to plug anything from the left, you can. I just wish there were more ports. But I believe Dell is going to be addressing all these things with their new models, the Pro machines. And I haven't gotten one of those in yet, but maybe I will. Let me know in the comments if you want to see that. Let's take a break and talk about bug reports for a moment. They're often missing key details and leave developers stuck in endless back and forths. Sound familiar? Meet Jam, the one-click bug report devs love. It's like a screen recorder, but smarter. Jam automatically includes all the technical context developers need, console logs, network requests, WebSockets data, and even GraphQL parsing. And all the bug reporter had to do was click once or use a recording link. Just send a link and get a complete bug report back from anyone. No installs or setup needed. Jam integrates seamlessly with tools like Jira, Linear, and Slack, so you can send and assign tickets directly from your website or app. Faster bug reporting, faster fixing, happier developers. Get better bug reports free at jam.dev. Now already you have to wonder if getting one of these X Elite machines is a good deal right now or not, because the battery seems to be lasting longer and the performance is better than Lunar Lake. But let's do a few more tests. Now for testing multi-core, I really like to use this program called the Mandelbrot algorithm. Mandelbrot was a mathematician that discovered those fractal patterns in nature. And there's an algorithm in Python that uses up all the available cores on your machine. It's pretty intense. You can find the source code on Benchmarks Game. Here is the program. It's pretty short, but it's effective. And they suggest to use 1600 or 16,000 as the parameter. I have it right here. And I'm going to use measure command from PowerShell to get a measurement at the end of the amount of time that it takes to run this. If you've been around the channel long enough, you know about this test. And let's go. Starting to hear the machine. That's the Snapdragon machine that I'm hearing. I'm not hearing the Lunar Lake machine at all. Look at that CPU usage going on. That's crazy. Working out. What's going on with this Lunar Lake? Is it working? Ooh, it's kind of unresponsive. <laughs> Look at that. Trying to access task manager it says not responding. Okay, this one is using all the cores too. So they're both using all the cores, which is what we want. And of course, since they're both using all the cores, the one with the more cores is gonna win, pretty obvious. But by how much? By the way, this is an interpreted language test, not a compiled test. So if you're running heavy programs like uh, Python processing, wait a minute, the Lunar Lake machine finished first. What? What? Hold on a second. Ho, 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 hold on a second. All right, measure command 16,000. Measure command 16,000. This is crazy. That just surprised the heck out of me. Why? Why did this happen? But the XLE machine made all that noise. It was working so hard. How did it not finish first? I'm just getting a lot of surprises today. Single core test, XLE destroyed the Lunar Lake machine. This test, I'm gonna have to do again because I just don't believe what I'm seeing. By the way, the result was 85 seconds on the X Elite machine, 70 seconds on the Lunar Lake machine. One more time, let's go. What the heck? What is going on? Listen to that noise. Temperature wise, we've got 40 degrees on the X Elite machine and around 37 over here on the Lunar Lake machine. Oh, wow. The, uh, <laughs> the spread is even more now with the Lunar Lake machine winning again. 59 seconds total time on the Lunar Lake machine, 89 seconds over here on the X Elite machine. Huh, weird. Now we're gonna check a compiled test. This is a C-sharp project, a .NET project, and I'm having it generate over 100,000 namespaces and classes. And I'm also doing a bunch of tricks to keep the compiler from optimizing away. So it has to actually do the work. Let's go. This might take a little while, but I think this test is more indicative of what software developers will typically do. They're not just running code, they're actually building and compiling code. So this test actually handles that situation. What do you think is gonna happen here? Because now I don't know. <laughs> I'm really curious about who is going to win this one. Put your comments down below. Who do you think is gonna win? 
Okay, we have a winner. 114 seconds on the X Elite machine and actually not too far behind on the Lunar Lake machine. 136 seconds. That's actually pretty good considering it has four less cores. But some of you might have noticed this. I noticed this, but did you notice this? We're not plugged in. This is running on battery. And as you know, in the past, Intel-based machines have really decreased their performance when on battery. So I'm gonna plug these in and test them again. But just before I do, let's take a peek at the battery because they've run the same exact stuff so far. 82% left on the X Elite machine, 74% left on the Lunar Lake machine. Hmm. By the way, both of these ran under best performance plugged in and on battery just in case you're curious and now we're gonna plug them in <laughs> if the intel one did that great while not plugged in hmm let's do that one more time this time plugged in well that was weird uh, <laughs> but this is good news and bad news at the same time the good news is that we have pretty much consistent results here except for the x elite it's a little bit slower maybe five six seconds slower but the intel machine is pretty much exactly the same maybe a couple of seconds faster but this is within the margin of error with lunar lake did intel actually break the spell of having to be plugged in to deliver good performance pretty cool now this is actually a new test that I haven't done with uh, these kinds of machines before. And I don't know why I should start doing it. I do dev AI related hardware and I do dev laptop reviews. So I should combine these tests. And somebody just asked me to do that in the comments of my video. So let's do it. This is gonna be Olama. And I'm just gonna do one basic model here, Gemma 3. I'm gonna do verbose output, right? A 1000 word story. Let's go. All right. It's happening and I think I'm seeing a difference already. Yeah, the X Elite machine is filling up the screen way, way faster. It is a lot noisier than I remember. That fan, I guess I'm pushing it a lot harder right now. Both of these stories are about rain. One is about Silas and the other one is about Elias. And they are very close. Prompt eval rate 59 on the X Elite, 19.42 tokens per second generation. And on the Lunar Lake machine, 49 tokens per second eval rate and 17 tokens per second generation. I'm doing that again. And uh, you can see that this is happening in the system memory and on the CPU that's on the X Elite machine. And yeah, same thing happening here. We're not doing it on the iGPU, we're doing it on the CPU on both of these machines. So all that tells me is that Olama is not really handling these systems very well. It's just offloading everything to the CPU and not using specialized APIs to handle the GPUs. I'm curious though about LM Studio because it exposes a little more through the UI what we can do. And you can see here that is detecting the Snapdragon X Elite Qualcomm Orion cores ARM based ARM64 architecture and the executable for LM Studio is actually Windows for ARM. It is showing that the RAM is, while being 16 gigabytes, VRAM is showing as zero. So it's not detecting that it's gonna do anything, offload anything to the GPU here. To do any kind of uh, significant machine learning stuff using the NPU, you'd need to use Qualcomm's libraries for that. And for the engine, we're gonna use the uh, Llama CPP CPU engine for this. Let's check out what's happening on the Intel machine. For the runtimes, ooh, here we've got Vulcan. So Llama CPP comes in different varieties, different APIs. It can use the CPU or it can use the GPU through Vulcan. So now that the engine is selected as Vulcan, I'm actually expecting the Intel machine to win. Yeah, check it out. It's detecting the Intel Arc GPU here. VRAM capacity, nine gigs. And I got the same model, Gemma 3, 4 billion. It's small enough and it'll give us a little comparison between the two. I did select GPU offload to be 34 out of 34 on the Intel machine. and. Unfortunately, I don't get that option on the X Elite machine because it doesn't detect the GPU. Let's see if we can get faster than 17 tokens per second on the Intel machine. Here we go. Okay, a little bit of a slow start for the Intel machine. <laughs> the X Elite machine seems to be actually going faster. Seems to be, we'll see. It's kind of hard to tell which one of them is going faster now, but I can tell you that the X Elite machine is making all that fan noise. Listen to that. Okay, we do have an improvement on the Intel machine. 25 tokens per second there for the same model. Very nice. And 19 tokens per second on the X Elite machine. So about the same as we had with Olama using the CPU. 
So the GPU offload is actually helping out here quite a bit. Although 19, 25, it's, it's what it is. Finally, it comes down to this, the battery test. And this is what I call a dev loop. These were charged to 100% first and they drain the battery as they do work. This is a custom script. It's doing writing code, building code. There's the compile test in there. There's also the Mandelbrot test in there. It uses Notion to take notes. It uses the to-do list app to check off to-do list items. It's playing music at low volume and both screens are at the highest level, which is the way I like to use it. So while this doesn't represent your specific setup, up. The computers are matched to each other and it matches all my other tests that I do in the past. There's also some video watching because this is meant to represent how uh, a developer's day would go. A lazy developer, but aren't we all a little bit lazy? Oh, the XLE machine dies first. That is surprising. Wow. Okay, that is a big difference. Wow, that Lunar Lake machine really holds out for a while, even after the warning, and then it finally died. Oh my gosh, that lasted a while. Intel does it with efficiency here. Nice work. Now, if you're interested in how I set up the Dell XPS machine for dev work, watch this video here. And if you wanna see the comparison between the previous generation Intel machine, watch it here. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.